Good afternoon everyone and today on Pintail's Garage we're rebuilding an entire rear end on the Mark II GTI. So as always let's get to work and break, fix and repeat. Season 6 is here, oh, season 6 is here, a pinch of Al's Garage, a pinch of Al's Garage, didn't have time to make an intro, so I just sang my own intro, <laughs> pinch of Al's Garage is here, and ready to fix it, break it, repeat it, and then fix it. Season six is here, everyone. A bench at Al's garage. So to get your process started for rebuilding the rear end, you're gonna need bearings, new rotors. You're also gonna need your spindle and everything like that cleaned up, and a pack of grease for each side. Uh, each side will require you to pack new bearing grease into it. Uh, because the bearings that come with them are dry technically they're just slightly lubricated but they need to be filled with grease so the stuff can lie your bearings can last a long time so let's get to work and um, get all your stuff ready so I'll give you guys an entire part list in just a moment so this is the kit that you're gonna need I got it from uh, VICO came with a pack comes with a pack of uh, grease your cotter pin, your seal, your dust cap, your nuts, and your two bearings right here for inner and outer with the races. Um, then I have StopTech uh, rotors here for left and right. They are specific for the rear. Um, and they're, they don't come with anything already in them, so that way we can press everything in correctly and show you guys how it's done. So we're going to assemble these first, and then... We're going to assemble the, um, the spindle here so we can get everything taken care of. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is clean my spindles first and degrease my dust pan and my, uh, my, my dust cover because I want everything as clean as possible on here so I don't, you know, I want to make it look good for the first time it's going to ever going to go on the road. It's got to look pretty good, right? All right, so I got my stuff cleaned up. Now to do the bearings. It is a process so just be patient because I will show you everything you need to do. So the first things we're going to do is get the spindles mounted and make sure we have the dust covers on as well. Everything's been cleaned up. Okay. It's kind of weird. So we have to make sure these line up. There's two different there's two different types of dust covers depending on the spindle. So this is the other side. They only go in one way. And I can't remember which way I had them. <laughs> oh man. No, it goes this way because that's where the rotor is at. Ah, so I like this. I believe they mount this. I think the spindle mounts first. Uh, I forgot, totally forgot how I took these off. Hot, 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 hot. So. This goes to the other side. This one belongs here. 
uh, each spindle is directional so they only mount one way so that's on there so I know that goes there I think this one goes on next Is totally wrong on this for some reason. Oh man, give me a minute. All right, so after doing some research online, actually in the U.S., depending on which version of the Mark II, the dust covers were actually installed backwards, as you guys can see here going online there's actually a couple ways of mounting this um, since this one has a disc brake these dust covers actually don't fit if you put them the other way and these are OEM guys I actually had these on I, I have all the original paperwork to this car so that's really odd that they are installed this way that's just how it goes. So remember that the mounting bracket for the caliper has to be facing outwards. Just like that. And then you got the little cap that goes on here. Once you get everything tightened down, uh, get that going, and then your spindle assembly will be done. The next step will actually be mounting the bearings on the rotor, uh, packing the grease, and then putting the bearings on and sliding the rotor on, and then tighten everything back up. Uh, so let's get to work, because we need to get that going. So, to get this guy mount, uh, installed, your bearings have two sides to them and you can tell there's a tapered side and a flat side the tapered side is facing up or actually facing down flat uh, this thinner side is facing up like that and then the bigger thicker bottom is facing down so here we go then we're going to do the top bearing or the top brace and we're just going to get that on there nicely now that's all nice and set there. So now we gotta find a socket that fits that. So I can press it down. Without causing any damage. And that one fits beautifully. Um, so this socket is a one and three sixteenths. One of my more popular sockets that I use all the time. So I'll move these out of the way. They won't be these. And all you're going to do is just go down nice and slow. Now I can tell like my socket isn't 100% straightened out, so all right. Now you're gonna go until it seats itself. Back it out. Damage that a little bit, but I don't think it's going to cause an issue. You still have to go way further down, so I'm going to have to get a smaller socket to finish this. It's a little bit on the smaller side. 
but as you can see there's a hole on top of it so I use my janky wrench I got a janky wrench that I do a lot of stuff with Now this is everything I use to compromise a lot of stuff because remember this is Pink Joe's Garage we do everything here on a budget so we take our time now if we want to make sure it went in correct with that see that's all nice and loose there so we want to be able to pull that back out So keep going down until it stops. That's the bottom. So now I can pull that socket out. No issues. We are at the bottom of the right there. Everything's clean. As long as we don't damage the inside of this right here, guys, you're golden. Now we're going to repeat the process on the other side. And this one's going to need a much, much bigger socket, but it doesn't have to go down as much. Um, so we see that so the socket that we were using was this guy too small let me go up a little bit more and that seems to fit beautifully and then this socket size is a 1 and 7 sixteenths Same exact procedure as how we did it the other side. And you want to feel for it to stop. Make sure you can wiggle your socket around. And then repeat. We're at the bottom. So now, you guys can see here, we made it to the bottom, right inside. That's where the race sits. And everything sits there nice and beautifully. So there you go. That's one, one wheel bearing. I, I mean, one rotor. So we got to repeat the process on another rotor. So let me get that going. So repeating the process. One side. Oh. I don't really see the problem. It went a little sideways. I'll just go straight down. And remember, feel for that stop. You'll know when you get to the bottom. That's one side. See if I can do this without the wrench. You can see it's about the same size. I think I can. Yep. Remember, all the way down until you feel it stop, and then you're there. So front and rear now are done, and then the way you can tell, you gotta look nice and close, but you can see the races hitting the bottom, same on both sides. That's the best indicator you guys have, is right inside, you gotta look in there for it to stop. That's it for these guys. So now we're gonna do the bearings. 
So your guys' next step here is to pack the wheel bearings. So with your grease and bearings, Cardboard here, so I can have a good station to work on. There we go. You guys can see this. So the bearings only go in one way. So if you put them in this way, you'll notice they just stick out. If you put them the other way, they fall into place where they're supposed to be. Okay. Now you'll notice they're dry. I mean, these things are completely dry. So this is why they hook it up with some grease right here. And this is probably just enough to pack one wheel bearing. This is messy, so. So what you want to do is grab the grease and literally just put your hand in it and soak it in there. And then you want to get it on the edge, all inside here. We'll spin it around and keep cramming it in there. This is probably the most messiest thing you can do. Is packing freaking wheel bearings, but it has to get done. So just keep packing them in there. Okay, that's done. Grease up the race and put that side in. Uh, whatever you guys have left, uh, what you do, you're gonna soak the actual spindle and wheel bearing grease as well this has to be packed remember we want to make sure we have all the essential lubrication because we don't want this to fail on us prematurely we still have to put more into it but that's literally the process uh, once you get everything done you're going to put the rotor on with the other bearing which we're going to pack right now. This bad boy. What's great about this is that they're so much cheaper than a normal wheel bearing because you have to do all the work yourself. It's so messy. You get some gloves, you can put some gloves on if you're a wimp. Don't like getting dirty. Now, you're, it's okay if you get the rotor all covered in grease. Um, just clean it off when you're done. Just don't forget to do that. Okay, mount that. Remember that little cover we have right here? Put that guy back here. And then put your rotor on. Just like that. Oh wait, I almost forgot. There's a seal that goes on top of here. Before we forget, there's a little rubber seal that sits on top of all this. that bearing in place, seals it, and 
okay and that's what keeps that in there um, I would pack more bearing grease right around the seam right here so it gets inside to there nicely this sucker this way and then this bearing goes on top just like that and then well we gotta fix that brake cover and that's it we'll show you the rest of it in just a moment but that's kind of the gist of actually doing the work Give me a minute and we'll show you the rest of it in just a moment. I just got to clean this all up. Okay, so now we got all that packed in, nicely sealed. The next thing is, see this little guy? This you have to save from your uh, previous uh, removal. This is what locks or keeps the uh, wheel bearing nice and seated. Uh, get that on there, put everything in by hand. Uh, that washer only goes on one way, okay, folks? It has no special, pretty much anything. And then uh, your cotter pin. Uh, a lot of this stuff doesn't go in very tight, so you can tighten it a little bit by hand, but it doesn't really do much for you. And then your cotter pin goes in just like that. Hey barn, how'd you get out of here? You know you're not supposed to be out here. My dog escaped. But yeah, that's it. Uh, I would look up the torque spec though really quick for the for this lot, little nut right here. I don't think it's very much. Is that a good cleaning? Don't forget, you guys have to actually remove all the uh, stuff right here with the brake cleaner. Barney, where are you going? Come back over here. How the hell? Alright guys, I'll give, I'll give you guys the torque specs on this really quick. Thanks again for watching this episode of Pinchal's Garage. Just pay attention in the description for the torque specifications. Thanks again. Have a good one. Alright, well, I'm not going away 100% yet. <laughs> so, as per the uh, Bentley guide... There is no torque spec for this, and you don't, apparently there isn't one, you just tighten it down by hand, so it's not goes on really tight, it just, it's like, it says half a turn, so if, what that means, like, if you're here by hand, and you're all the way to the bottom, by hand, like, you can't turn it anymore, you grab it, and... I mean, that's pretty much it. Like, that's it. It does not go on super tight. Because it will cause damage. As per the Bentley manual states. So you should be able to remove it pretty easily. So there we go. It's, there we go. And then half a turn, which is not very much. Because this makes it go on really tight, if that's the case. again so you guys can see that put it on by hand and then that's a quarter turn and then about half a turn half a turn that's it I'm not gonna go too much 
because uh, there isn't any torque specification for it. Then you put your cotter pin right in there and then you're going to bend your cotter pin around pretty much like that. Same with the other one. You bend it the other way. And that's pretty much what holds in, holds the nut in place. You shouldn't have very much play to begin with. You should have just enough play just to kind of um, and that's it. Honestly, there's that's there's not much you can do after that. Um, and that should be on there pretty nicely. Once those bearings break in, it should be all good. Then you grab your dust cap, your brand new dust cap. You got to hit it in with the hammer. I know you guys don't want to hear that, but that goes in. Turn the volume down if it gets too loud. Come on, ratchet. This one side won't go in. that dust cap but it needs to go on. I don't think that dust cap had a good fit it. I might use, reuse my old one if that's the case. This one did not fit really well. Or flush. Usually they just slide right on. You shouldn't have to put that much effort into putting them on. So that's done with that. The next step is mounting your caliper. And that's easy. Just remember your pra, you know. And that's pretty much it right there. Here's your caliper install. There's not much to it. Once we get that straightened out, I'll get the bolts for that, but there's that. Looking beautiful. Beautiful setup. And we'll get these calipers painted and that's it. It's just the two bolts in the back. The next procedure will be we're actually gonna be making brake lines later um, and all the other fun stuff to get this stuff set in here nicely. So thanks for watching again. Sorry I had to re uh, show you guys the destruction of that dust cap. <laughs> but we had to be done. So thanks again for watching everybody. Stay tuned for a lot more for this MK2 GTI build. Peace out.